not going to be able to talk to all the many of the wonderful stories I have to tell in connection with uh, the evolution of knowledge and the science fiction will have to be detailed. Maybe you'll get a chance to see it on some other occasion. Back in the early 30s, young kids would get together and talk about science fiction. This is 1931. It's a club called the Scienceers. And the kids here are anywhere from 16 to 18. Please observe the dress code back in those days. In 1931, we all wore jackets and ties, and we got around to talk about science fiction. Now, these are a group of fans. This is not a convention, this is a club meeting in the Bronx, New York. At the same time, fans were getting together to talk about science fiction. Some professionals were getting together to talk about science fiction. This is a group in Milwaukee called the Milwaukee Fictioneers. It's about 1934. And uh, these are all pulp writers, but the three main ones I'd like to call to your attention. The fellow on the left, sitting, sitting down with a mustache, is Roger Sherman Hoare, who wrote science fiction under the name Ralph Milne Farley. If you know anything about science fiction, he wrote a series of stories that had the word radio in it, like the radio war, the radio planet, the radio man, and so on. The fellow on the far right with the glasses, probably chewing on a cigarette or, or a toothpick, uh, had just sold his first story to Weird Tales. He's 17 years old and his name is Robert Block. Robert Block, of course, is the writer who uh, wrote Psycho, and was made a movie by Alfred Hitchcock. Robert Block this year will be guest, one of the guests of honor at the World Fantasy Convention. The fellow in the center reading a manuscript seated down. I'm going to give you a closer shot of him. This is him now. Isaac Asimov wrote an article for a newspaper in New York called The Five Most Important People in Science Fiction. And he listed them as follows. There was Jules Wayne, H.G. Wells, Edward E. Smith, Doc Smith, who wrote the Skylark stories. The fifth, fifth one was John W. Campbell, Jr. And this one was his fourth one. His name was Stanley G. Weinbaum. He wrote a remarkable story about 1935 or so called The Martian Odyssey that took the science fiction world by storm. I became his agent and sold uh, maybe 15 to 20 more stories before he died of cancer in the throat a year later, a year and a half later. Too bad. Stanley G. Weinbaum, in my opinion, would have been the greatest science fiction writer of all. The group, the group of fans that you saw earlier, some of them went down <coughs> to Philadelphia the whole, not a convention, but just a get-together. Well, some might say it's a convention. This is Philadelphia, 1947. Uh, looking at the top row, the first one on the left is a very prominent uh, science fiction writer, editor, and publisher his named Donald A. Wolheim, who was guest of honor two years ago at the Wilcon. The fellow next to him is Robert A. Madel, a very important, famous fan. He was the uh, guest of honor at the science, World Science Fiction Convention, you know, maybe 10 years or so ago. The next to him is Sam Moskowitz, who was the chairman of the First World Science Fiction Convention of 39. The fellow with the hat is a writer who named Dick Wilson. The fellow with the pipe in his mouth is David A. Kyle, who is an important fan of science fiction. Uh, the fellow with the hat is me. Well, I have to go back and point, uh, I, I, let me go back to that science here thing for a second. I forgot to point out where I am, good heavens. I'm in the top row in the middle. I had plenty of hair back in those days. Now well, seated. You were, the, you were gorgeous. What, I still am? Yes, you are. <laughs> That's why we gave you the line set up. I, now seated. Now on the far right in the second row is my lifelong friend, Mort Weisinger. He and I are practically responsible for science fiction fandom, conventions, and everything else. Mort and I were very close. We started the first science fiction agency. Ward eventually became the editor of Thrilling Wonder Stories, Startling Stories, and Captain Future, and uh, eventually became the editor of Superman. I, I continued with the agency, got involved with DC Comics, and also wound up as editor of Superman. So Ward and I had a very parallel career. And don't forget, of course, for Ward and me, none of you guys would be here today. <laughs> oh, I went the wrong way. All right. Uh, here's the Philadelphia group. Uh, seated down below are some important people, names we to you. But these are the fans that got together in Philadelphia in 1937. In 1937, a group of professionals got together. Same year, 
And strangely enough, these are all rock writers, all professionals, you might say, and many of them became grandmasters of science fiction and or fantasy. And some of them are even alive today. That's 53 years ago. The fellow standing on the far left has been writing science fiction for since uh, in, how many years? in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and even in the 90s. He's written science fiction more than any other person I can think of. He's still alive at 82 years of age. His name is Jack Williamson, Grandmaster of Science Fiction. The fellow next to him with the pipe in his mouth is here at this convention today. I just saw him about an hour or so ago. He's also 82 years old. He's a Grandmaster of Fantasy. His name is El Sprague de Camp. So if you run into camp, that's how he looked. He looks pretty much the same except now he has right here. The fellow next to him is a writer named John D. Clark. The fellow next to him is still alive. He is a weird tale of fantasy and science fiction writer. He's now 89 years old. His name is Frank Belknap Long. The fellow next to him is my lifelong friend, as I explained, Maud Weisinger. The fellow next to him is a very famous science fiction writer in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. His name is Edmund Hamilton. And the fellow next to him is a, also a very famous science fiction writer, also helped found the Weird Tales back in the early 20s. His name is Otis Adelman Klein. I'll tell you more about Klein later. Kneeling is Otto Binder, who wrote science fiction with his brother Earl under the name Eando Binder, E and O, Earl and Otto Binder. Otto also became involved with comics and he wrote at least 500 Captain Marvel stories. The fellow next to him is another grand master of fantasy, a very good pal of mine. And a, I, just, I weep every time I think about his passing a couple of years ago. His name, mainly Wade Llewellyn. And the fellow next to him, still a lot of hair, is moi. That's me over there, 1937. This is a group of fans that gathered together in Queens, New York, to remember the Queen Science Fiction League. And uh, these are some of the fans that start to mix with the pros. The fellow with the striped tie, the fourth person from the left, is Sam Moskowitz, who I described before as being the chairman of the first World Science Fiction Convention. The fellow next to him is Charles D. Horning, who put out a fan magazine shortly after I did, called Fantasy Fan, and he printed a lot of stories by H.P. Lovecraft, I think possibly Robert E. Howard, Clark Ashton Smith, none of which was copyrighted, it's all in the public domain. He also, at the age of 17, became the managing editor of Wonder Stories, worked on the Hugo Gainsbourg. The fellow next to him was a young fan from Brooklyn who came into our meetings and said, I'm going to be a writer someday, and I have a manuscript in my hand I want to show you all around because someday I'm going to sell that story. Does anyone recognize that fellow? No, that's Isaac Eisenhower. That is young Isaac Eisenhower. He's starting to write me. What? He's starting to write most of us about the stuff. I just can't hear you. He started at Fandom then, like the rest of us. Right, exactly. He was a member of the Queen Science Fiction League. Here's another meeting of the Queen Science Fiction League. The point is, I persuaded these professionals to come to the meeting, and every time I told the fans that professionals were going to come, they all came because they wanted uh, to see them and meet them because they read their stories. Now, the fellow on the left was Conrad H. Rupert who printed my fan magazine. I put out the first fan magazine in 1932 called The Time Traveler, followed by Science Fiction Digest and Fantasy Magazine. He printed it. Next to him is Charles E. Hornick, who I already described. Next to him, not the fellow in the back, is Otto Bender. The tall fellow is a fellow from England, a wonderful writer, and uh, I was his agent. And I sold a story of his, and the money that I sent him enabled him to fly to New York is, I'll show you a closer picture of him later. His name is Eric Frank Russell. That's me next to him, and on the far right again is Jack Williams. So you see how we brought in the professionals to come to the meetings. Well, it did so well, we said, why don't we have a World Science Fiction Convention, but let's have a tryout first. And we had what is called the Newark Conference, and we wanted to see how much it drew. So going, these are some of the fans, a little pros. The fellow on the left is Edward Weising, who was the brother of Mort, I explained before. The fellow next to him is Milton Kolesky, he's a school chum of mine. He wrote for amazing stories. The fellow next to him is Leo Brega fan. There's Mort Weisinger again, there's me again, and there's mainly Wade Weldon. This is the Newark Science Fiction Convention. And here are some of the fans over there. I just want to point out the fourth from the left. That's uh, a fellow who up to be a pretty good writer. His name is Fred Pohl, Frederick Pohl. That's Frederick Pohl about the age of 17 or so. Here are some of the professionals that attended. From left to right, Otis Adam Klein, Frank Belknap Long, Arnie Swisher, and John W. Campbell Jr. showed up. 
There's out of window there spraying the camp again with that same pipe. John D. Clark and another pipe smoker, mainly Wade Weller. So it went over pretty well. We got the professionals to come, we got the fans to come. So we decided, oh, this is a, uh, the meeting inside the uh, uh, Newell Convention. And that's John W. Campbell bent over, reading a copy of Fooling Wonder Stories, because he learned a lot of editing for reading Filling Wonder, which I will tell about a little bit later. I see Otis out of the Klein there, and Frank Bellant Long, and Otto Binder, and so on. I spray the campus there, too. Now, this is the first World Science Fiction Convention of 1939, held in New York City at Caravan Hall. And this is the crowd over the July 4th weekend. This is the crowd that gathered outside. We had no idea how many people would attend. And, of course, we would never dare think of charging the money to come to a convention. I think if they asked, we probably would have paid them to come to the convention. And those who came to the convention could only afford to stay at the Y, it was only 50 cents a night, and a lot of people came from New York City by subway, only goes to nickel. But if you came from Chicago, and if you came from the far, far west, this is the caravan hall outside. Now here are some of the personalities that helped help form the uh, convention. On the top row are Sam Oswitz, the uh, chairman, next to him is William Sakura member of the Queen Science Fiction League, Jimmy Jurassic, also a member of the Queen Science Fiction League. On the far right, top row is Fari Ackman. Mr. Science Fiction himself was the age of uh, 19 at that time. Came all the way in from California. And the bottom row is the, the one of the two great leather hacks of the day in, in conjunction with Fari Ackman. That's Jack Darrow. Next to him is Moroyo, who's a friend of Ackman. Next to her is a terrible picture of me. I don't know where the hell he got it. I think like it was doctored up, trying to make me good looking, I guess. Next to him is Mario Reza. These are the eight people that helped form the convention. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, I pressed the wrong one again. <coughs> this, is the, <coughs> excuse me, this is the program book. Up at this point, any convention or club gathering we had did not have any program book. We had a program for sun <coughs> excuse me again, Sunday. I'll try to speak a little slower. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, we had a guest of honor speech. We had movies. Uh, uh, we even had a banquet, as we're having at this convention in a few hours from now. But only 18 people attended that convention because they didn't have enough money. It was too expensive for them. The price for attending the banquet was one dollar. Now, you all may laugh and smile, but this is 1939, during the Depression days, and the dollar was a dollar. So it is the program, but well science fiction. But the heading was done by Frank R. Paul, a famous science fiction artist. Okay. This is Los Angeles, California. The fellow on the far left is uh, Fari Ackerman again. And the fellow on the far right is a friend of his. Saying, Fari, I'd really love to go to that science, well, science fiction convention, but I have no money. Could you let me go $75 or so so I can take a bus ride across the country? And I want to go to the Wales Fair, I want to go to the Wales Science Fiction Convention, and I want to get a hold of that guy, Julie Schwartz, because he's a science fiction literary agent, and I'm going to be a writer someday, and I want him to be my agent. In case you don't know, that is Ray Bradbury. That's Ray Bradbury at the age of about 18 and 19. On the right? On the right, yes. On the right with the striped shape, that's Ray Bradbury. And of course he did come to the convention, he rode the bus. And here he is on the way to the convention. Look how happy he is. He's here in New York, he's on the far <laughs> left with the glasses. Next to him is Leo Margulies, who was the editorial director of the Standard Magazine, who put out Fling One the Startling, which Ray eventually sold to. And in between them was Maud Weisinger, who was the uh, my lifelong friend again, and who was the editor of the magazine. So there's a happy Ray Bradbury getting started on his career because he had some stories to tell me and, and try to get me. It took me two years before I could sell one of the stories, but once I sold it, he was on his way. Here is Fari Ackman on the way to the convention. Came in costume, 4SJ, the